Now, the late American photographer Richard Avedon was famous for his black and white portraits that captured some of the best known faces of the 20th century. Some of his work is now on display at the Ian Potter Museum of Art in Melbourne. The exhibition includes portraits of Marilyn Monroe, Bob Dylan, that wonderful portrait of Elizabeth Taylor that we'll see in a moment, and it also celebrates the faces of ordinary people too. Paris-based scholar Abigail Solomon Godot is also in Melbourne this week to give a talk about the exhibition, and she joins us now to discuss the life and times of Richard Avedon. Rich, uh, Abigail, good morning. Good Thanks morning. so much for joining us today. Um, let's have a look at some of the images as we talk, because of course the moment people see uh, more of them, Abigail, they'll, they'll immediately recall them. He famously said words to the effect of, my, my work doesn't go beneath the surface. He says there's always a hell of a lot to be seen on the surface. There, there, is, there, is a, there are the details on the surface that you can pay attention to. I have great faith in surfaces, he said, which is an interesting philosophy. Well, for somebody who does fashion photography, and which was effectively his day job, I mean, that's what supported what he considered to be his artistic production. Yeah is about surfaces. What could be more about surfaces than fashion photography, where even when it appears to be most spontaneous, models leaping, running, jumping, everything is choreographed, everything is precisely about the perfection of surface. And um, one of the things that I think is very interesting, given what I'm calling the day job as a fashion photographer is that when he embarked upon really his career long work in portraiture, the perfection of the surface was exactly what he repudiated, even though there was still the perfection of the print and the perfection of the presentation and the perfection of the scale and so forth. So this notion of surface is really interesting because it does link in a very profound way the work of fashion, glamour, mm. allure, the illusion of with aha. Yeah. I mean, the, she just happened to find herself in front of two elephants, did she? That's right. Yeah. Just <laughs> walking around in Paris, there were the two elephants. Stop there and I'll take your photograph. One of his yeah, most yeah. famous pieces from um, Harper's Bazaar. That's so interesting, that paradox that you describe. Because, yes, you're right. There's the full-on um, frontal portrait, warts and all, of ordinary Americans or glamorous people. Incredibly simple white background. But as you say, and we'll, we'll get to the construction of that in a moment, but as you say, the actual process itself really preoccupied him trying to find the right kind of paper that would work for him, the right sort of printing process, the right dimension. And he, he, he made up oversized prints of those work as well. So that process he was exacting about, wasn't he? But he was exacting in all aspects of his work. And as soon as he was in a position to really control what he did, how he did it, and so on, he did. And that is extraordinarily rare mm. for people who work for, at that time, magazines, various clients. Because they're your master. Yeah. They're dictating what, what they want for their magazine. But that's why he had this really unprecedented degree of freedom, certainly by the time he became the first and only official New Yorker photographer. And that's where many of our viewers, I'm sure, will be familiar with his work, those beautiful black and white portraits that he took for the New Yorker. And there simply wasn't a feature article that appeared there on a person that didn't have an Avenant portrait. L let's go back. I've always wanted to know what the origin was of those two distinct elements of his portraits. The white background, just the perfectly simple white, which I know he played with from time to time, but also leaving in the black frame of the, the, the contact print. Now, yeah. like most great inventions, was that accident originally rather than design? You know, I don't really know if it originally happened as accident, but Richard Avedon was not a photographer who embraced accident particularly. But it became a kind of, um, it was, it indicated that you had made no crop to the to, to the um, okay. to, to the frame. So Showing the, the black edges meant this has not been manipulated. This okay. is the entire frame of the exposure. And of course, it quickly got picked up by other yes. photographers as a statement of the non-manipulation, which of course is a fiction itself, because even. Um, working on the white background itself or eliminating any shadow that mm. might have um, 
spoiled it was, of course, about manipulation. I understand that, that when he was um, with someone and photographing them, maybe not everyone, but with some of his sitters, if he wanted to try and uh, elicit a, a more telling and interesting response, he would, he would talk to them, he would ask them questions, he would perhaps ask them rather psychologically probing or even prying questions in order to, to get some sort of response from them. Well, the classic anecdote that's given about how he would contrive to get a facial expression that he wanted was that when the Duke and Duchess of Windsor were, were his sitters and whatever it was they were um, uh, projecting beforehand at a certain point he started talking about how his taxi had run over a dog and of course since they were dog lovers he got this expression of dismay <laughs> entirely Fabricated, fabricated story. But yeah. photography yeah, is yeah, truth. Yeah. Let's not yeah, forget yeah. that, shall we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it worked nicely for him. Um, it's been interesting to see the, the selection of works that, that have come out as part of this exhibition. I know the, the Avedon Foundation um, that manages the estates so very, very carefully controls the works because like a lot of high profile photographic artists, um, theft and also uh, breach of copyright and copying goes on all the time with photographers like this. That must be a very difficult thing to deal with for them. Well, it certainly makes it difficult when you want to reproduce works of, um, from the Abaddon estate because, mm. of course, you need permission and, of course, permission is charged. And, in fact, one of the difficulties with academic publishing when you do a book for a university press, and this is not just the case with the Abaddon studio, is that this is also the case with museums. You have to pay really very sometimes prohibitive fees yeah. for the right, for reproduction rights. So, uh, I mean, not every photographer, not every photographer's estate is in a position to be able to monitor all the reproductions, all the uses, whether it's been cropped and so on. But certainly this is also the case with the Arbus estate that's yes, able indeed, to yeah. control reproduction in the same way the Avedon estate can. It, it's interesting uh, and, and I often wonder what those artists Richard Avedon, Diane Arbus and others would make of the fact that we have now this this new culture and this new digital technology and communication where any image can be <laughs> colonized if you like by any person that is sent anywhere. I wonder if I wonder if Richard Avedon would have embraced that or if he would have resisted that. It's you know it's hard to tell because the advent of digitalization is what I call, and I hate to use such academic terminology, but a kind of epistemological break with analog photography. Yes, In other words, the difference total is so profound that it's very hard to sort of say, well, what would so-and-so have thought about the advent of oh, digitalization? Yes. The one thing I feel confident he would not have made a fuss about is manipulating the image yeah. because despite you know the use of the the frame um, to make a kind of image that is not a kind of dumb photograph yeah. is always about manipulation. Um, we know that for truth. Abigail, really great to meet you today. Thanks so Thank much you. and um, commend the exhibition to those who might be able to get to Melbourne to see it. Thanks yes. so much. Yes, okay. Thank you.